Okay, another uh, installment of my rock and roll stories from the 80s and 90s. Um, at the time, I was in a band called Espionage, and we're going to start with this photo. It has nothing to do with my band, really, but this is the outside of the rehearsal hall that we used to practice in. <clears throat> in that door, the white door there, you would have one, two, three, three, four, four practice, four practice rooms, and they, uh, two of them had stages, and two of them didn't have stages. They were just a flat room. And then next door there was a fifth room, <clears throat> and uh, the the guys that cr uh, put this they, they rented it and they, they put it together. They were construction workers and they, they were all musicians in a band, and the band was called Archer. And they had a backyard manager, and the, so the rehearsal hall was called um, Archer Incorporated. It was just Archer. They just put their name on it. <clears throat> so they would rent these uh, these rooms out to us, and I think we were paying. I believe 275 back then. It was a a room with a little a little stage and then a a backstage like a kind of like like a stage and an offset square for for a drum drum set to go. And then you had a little limited space on the floor where you could put chairs and you know your your friends could come hang out, <clears throat> kind kind of watch you play on a rehearse. You could rehearse on like a, a stage of sorts and. It was carpeted. It wasn't air, air conditioned. It was kind of warm in the summer, but there was a, uh, a, ven a ventilation system, so it brought in cool air, fresh air. And uh, what you're looking at is uh, <clears throat> on the uh, the guy with the beer can flipping you off. His name is uh, Jeff, and the other guy, Jeff was a guitar player, and the other guy's a bass player. Kind of kind of looked a little bit like Cliff Burton, and his name was Dusty. They were in a band called. Armageddon, and their other guitar player was was kind of good friends with uh, my band. They, uh, what was his name? Can't remember his name, but he used to come see uh, my guitar player play. <clears throat> so that's the place. And uh, it was concerning. Uh, we got, you know, the the Archer's manager would book a gig, and he, you know, naturally would need a band to uh, you know a couple opening bands or whatever so naturally we, we picked up a few gigs that way and uh, <clears throat> this particular gig was at Club Mirage and this is Club Mirage uh, when they moved the stage to the back used to have the stage uh, on the other side here and so we <laughs> we got we got the show and we were told that by the backyard manager who was booking us it was a freebie don't get paid and Club Mirage at that time was run or leased by the rumor was Mafia from from Las Vegas and so when we did roll in there one of the first things I noticed was the guy behind the bar looked like somebody was would be named Guido probably like an ex hitman that you know the Mafia they just tapped their guys to do whatever job they need at the time so he was running the bar so it definitely had that Mafia vibe and these guys definitely looked Italian Americans and they definitely uh you know definitely had that that mafia vibe <clears throat> so we played the gig and that's bob bob lindstrom over there from he was in previously in a band called steel vengeance had albums out with a french label and that's steve and that's me over there another shot of the band this is this is about a few months before jeff paremba joined the band this is an outside gig at a school called abraxas Abraxas Continuation High School in Poway, California. Oh, yeah. And uh, you can see I had one Marshall stack. It was the days before I had two Marshall stacks. It wasn't long after that I got two. But then I had a sun cabinet. <coughs> a sun uh, bass head there. And, and another sun guitar cabinet that I took the speakers out and loaded some bass ca uh, speakers in there. So that was the band. That was the era. This is about 1989. <clears throat> so we get done playing the gig and we go home we don't expect any money and about about a week later maybe it was like say we played it might have been a Friday or a Saturday that we played and by Thursday I got a letter in the mail addressed to espionage it just said espionage I had my my address and it didn't have any return address nothing on it um, it wasn't a letter size it was just like one of those the, the smallest uh, envelopes that you can get and I open it up because <clears throat> it's dressed to espionage, and inside is a check for fifty dollars. And I don't know who signed it, 
it might have been like a business check or something. I, I can't remember because all I remember from from opening the check is like, who the hell is this from? Had no idea. And just a little bit of a gut feeling. It's like, because because fifty dollars would have been what we should have been paid at this gig if if, <clears throat> if we were an opening band and we weren't paid anything. So and we weren't we were told we weren't going to be paid and, and we kind of had the feeling like. Archer's backyard manager is going to get paid for us, but he's just not going to give us the money. They're going to pocket it. Either the manager was going to pocket it or the band, and I kind of leaned towards the, the manager was just going to pocket it and probably didn't even tell his band about it, the band that he managed, Archer, because we were friends with them. <coughs> anyway, so Thursday night is a practice night. I, I bring it to I bring it to practice, and I think I... I... I I said, hey guys, check this out. It's, it's it's addressed to us, so we got to split this up. So I think everybody made change, and we we all had a uh, a little more than um, you know a little more than ten dollars, which wasn't much at all. <clears throat> and uh, we should have just put it in a band fund, but at the time we didn't have a band fund. So we discussed like who the hell sent us this, and nobody could figure it out, and and I sure didn't know. And, and so a month or two later, we. Did another gig. We, the manager said, "You want to play another gig? It's free again this time, guys. Uh, you don't get paid." So we said, "Okay." And again, a week later, we get another check addressed to Espionage, and the same thing. I open it up. There's no identifying um, information in it. It's just a fifty-dollar check to. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it was written out. I'm pretty sure it was just written out to the band. And, and I forget how I got it cashed, but I did. <laughs> Somehow I got it cashed. Maybe it was written out to one of us. I don't know. Maybe they left that blank and, and we filled it in. I can't really remember. All I know is we got $100 for, for two gigs and had no idea who sent us that money. But at the time, and still, my only theory is, and I told the guys this, I said, the, the mafia, may, they may be organized crime criminals, but they, they have a code and, and they, don't, they don't screw people that they do business with. So... My, my theory was their accountant figured out what was going on and made sure we got paid. So that was pretty cool. And around that time we were sporting this demo. That's an insert from the demo and what else. So yeah, that's all the pictures. The only other thing I can add, not to that story, but when we played this gig, there was a bit of a spinal tap moment where we had loaded up all our gear, and we were waiting around for, I forget, we were waiting, waiting around to get ready to leave, maybe for the, the, the roadie to get back from a fast food place or something. We're, it was me, Bob, and Steve, and, and the drummer was there too, but uh, it was, Bob and Steve were sitting on a bench. I might have been on the bench, but one of us was up, and I think it was Paul, <clears throat> and one of the students walked over just kind of sheepishly sheepishly walked over to Bob and Steve sitting on the bench and he just approached them, stood in front of them, and they just looked at him like, you know, okay, we're, they knew that he was going to say something and they were, you know, waiting for him to say something. And it, it's almost like he didn't know what to say and he just looked at him and said, what's your name? He asked that to Bob there. And Bob looks up and goes and says, Bob, because he's had a Michigan accent. And the kid just, oh, and he turned around and he just walked away. And we were like, <laughs> just started laughing. <laughs> Didn't know what to make of that at all. And that was that was definitely like a, a weird spinal tap moment. He didn't ask for a signature or anything, just what's your name, and turn around and walked away. And so that's my story for, for this segment. You know, it's kind of a big mystery of who sent us that money, but, but I think it was the Mafia that sent us that money. Kind of interesting. Alright, till next time, and oh, and in case anybody's wondering about my base covers, my mom broke her hip, and she is now recovering in my place. I had to pack up all my gear and throw it in a closet and a couple pieces in the van, and she may be here a couple more weeks, so I can do another base cover. I just won't be able to do it in that room, and I don't know when I'm going to get to my next one because I'm busy a lot caring for my mom. So everybody have a good good day and night out there and have fun. and. You guys out there that are subscribing to my channel, you're making base covers, keep them coming because I do watch them. See ya.